looking at Rack Attack. Rack Attack is a rack middleware for blocking and throttling abusive requests. And our goal with using something like Rack Attack is to limit throttle or block requests from malicious users, naive API clients, or abusive requests. For example, if you have an open API to your application and someone is pinging your API twice a second to fetch a bunch of data, this could cause a performance degradation and other users may suffer. If you find that someone is trying to log in 100 times a second with different user accounts from the same IP address, you may be suspicious that this is a malicious user trying to hack into your site. And this is where Rack Attack comes into play. At the Rack middleware level, we can thwart these requests so that the expensive calculations at the application level are not performed. So to get started, add Rack Attack to your gem file and be sure to run Bundle and Restart your Rails application. And then under your configuration directory in the application.rb file, you'll want to add in the config, middleware, use, and then Rack Attack. And then in your config initializers directory, we can create a new file and we'll just call this Rack Attack. And within here, we'll create a class called Rack Attack. And this is where we'll put in all of our logic for throttling the requests. And Rack Attack does use your Rails cache, so you can call something like this where you have your Rack Attack cache store, and then by default, it's just going to use your active support Rails cache. And the DSL for Rack Attack is fairly simple. You pass in throttle, you give it a key, a limit and a period, and then you pass in the request block. The limit is the number of times the action can be called over a period of 10 seconds. And this will just store a cache item that will increment for each period with an update, and it'll set the current key time to the current time, and it'll allow for the period. So once that time expires, and that period of 10 seconds has passed, then a new key would be generated and the old one will expire. So we can pass in our request at IP address and this would allow someone to access the site up to three times per 10 seconds. And we can extend this to apply it only to our API. So if we do if request.subdomain equals API, then if the subdomain is API, then this restriction of the throttle would only apply there. To get the subdomain, because it's not part of our rack request, you just have access to something like host, which would have the full host name, we can extend the rack attack with something like this, where we're calling a new class, request, and we're inheriting from the rack request, and then we're defining the subdomain, we're calling in our host, splitting at the periods, and then calling the first result. And another example is you may want to limit the number of times someone can log in within a given period. So with something like this, we're calling the limit of five for every 20 seconds. And it'll only return the IP address if the request path is login and if the request is a post. And if it is, then it'll increment the cache counter and it'll look at the IP address and it would prevent them from logging in six times within a 20 second period. And this example would not work very well if you had a really large client in an office building who all shared the same public IP address. The application would then limit only five users every 20 seconds. So instead of throttling by the IP address, you could throttle by the params of the email passed in. So if the request path is login, and if the request is a post, then it'll return the email parameter that was passed in through the post. So this way, only the particular user would be able to log in up to five times every 20 seconds. And don't forget, because this is an initializer file, anytime you make changes to this, you may need to restart your Rails application to test. And if we test this out, you'll first see that we have our curl request from the previous episode. And when we call this, we get our return of the user. And if we call this multiple times within 10 seconds, you'll start seeing that we now get a responsive retry later. And if we call the same command and pass in dash i for headers, you'll see that we get the response back because it has been within 10 seconds. If we run it multiple times, you'll then see that we're actually getting a HTTP response for 29 too many requests. 
And another cool thing about Rack Attack is that it also gives you the retry after the period. And this is useful so that you can read this header and you'll see that you can only call this every 10 seconds. So then you can put a sleep on your API interface to retry after 10 seconds. And from that point, you would then get a successful response. And you'll see on the right hand side in our application logs that the application controller is not actually responding back, but it's getting interrupted at the Rack middleware level and it's responding back with the HTTP 429. So definitely check out the documentation because there's a lot in here that we did not cover. For example, with SafeList, it'll completely override any kind of block list or throttles that are configured. And you would just set something up like this where you have a safe list, you pass in a key, and then it passes in the request block and you check to see if it's a local IP address. The block list is on the other side where you're blocking a specific IP address. So it's not even going to go through the different throttles. It'll just completely block that request each time. And then you can have something like a fail to ban, which the fail to ban will detect certain kind of behavior. In this case, it's checking to see if they're trying to get the ETC password or if it's a WordPress -y type of action. It'll allow the user to retry a few times within a 10 minute period. And then on the fourth time, it's going to ban them for five minutes. And then you also have access to tracks, which is a tie in to your active support notification that you can do some special logging on any kind of failed requests or throttled or blocked requests. And definitely check out the wiki because they do have some example configurations for a simple configuration that has some of the basic setups that you may find for an application. And then they also have a more advanced configuration, which just shows you a bit more of the uh, different kind of things that you can do with Rack Attack. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.